Why is Neymar so hated? Is it his diving and bad attitude or is it his lack of respect and constant partying? Well what if I told you it was none of those things that made Neymar so hated but instead a completely separate reason that made Neymar go from superstar to supervillain. The exact same reason that led many to believe that Neymar had wasted his career and underachieved. Neymar was supposed to be the next Pele, the next in line to bring Brazil world glory. As a teenager he was that good. Pele even claimed he was better than Messi. I think Neymar has a possibility to play you know, better than I said. That's what I said. But now you'd be crazy to even mention Neymar in the same sentence as both of them. So what exactly happened? How did Neymar go from superstar wonder kid to the most hated footballer on the entire planet? Neymar wasn't your average Brazilian wonder kid. When he was just 18, Neymar was one of the best players in the world. As a teenager watching him play football, it was impossible to not fall in love with what he could produce on the pitch. In 2011, he went from wonder kid to legitimate superstar. This is when he truly became the next Pele, the biggest stage of South American football, the Copa Libertadores. Santos hadn't won this competition in 48 years since Pele was on the team. The pressure was high for Neymar to break a half century drought, yet he delivered. He was the best player in the entire tournament, showing up on the big stage and shined brightest in the final, scoring and winning man of the match as Santos wanted to win the Copa Libertadores for the first time since Pele. The importance of this win cannot be understated. He just lit the entire continent on fire. He was the biggest name in Brazil at 19 and everyone knew he was destined to be great. And that year, he also scored one of the best goals you'll ever see. Facilidade do Neymar, levitando o jogador do Santos. Aí o Neymar. That goal ended up winning the 2011 Pushkas Award and people were realising how good this kid was going to be. The accolades didn't stop that year. He won South American Football of the Year and was nominated for the Ballon d'Or, coming 10th place in voting that year, becoming the first ever player who wasn't playing in Europe to be voted in the top 10. And he was a teenager. Everyone was rooting for this kid. He was bringing joy into football. Pele even had bold words to say, claiming he was better than Messi. He stayed at Santos until 2013, where he got another South American Football of the Year and two more Ballon d'Or nominations, including a fifth place finish before leaving for Barcelona in summer 2013. It was time to do on the big stage in Europe and win every trophy he could. Most importantly, he needed to level up his game and show the world what he could do at the 2014 World Cup. He was the most hyped player coming out of Brazil ever. His ceiling was multiple Ballon d'Ors, but everyone knew he was going to be the greatest Brazilian footballer of all time. Those were his expectations. He finished his Santos career with 230 games, 138 goals and 65 assists, generational numbers. Neymar's first season at Barcelona was about playing at the highest level in preparation for the biggest tournament of his career and he had a strong first season showing that his talent and skills could translate at Barcelona. It was now time for him to step up for the 2014 World Cup in his home country. His chance to join the likes of Pele, R9 and Ronaldinho all as Brazilian legends. The question was could he live up to the hype? Yes, despite the immense pressure faced at 22, he delivered, finishing with four goals in the group stage alone. The attack was flowing through him and he put the team on his back. They beat Chile to advance through to the quarterfinals where they faced Colombia and as usual Neymar was the star as Brazil were heading through 2-1. This was really their moment but one horror tackle changed it all. The fairy tale was over. Neymar fractured his vertebrae and had to miss the rest of the tournament. They had to play Germany in the semis without their star player and we all know what happens next. 7-1, the most embarrassing loss in World Cup history and in front of the home crowd too. You can't say for sure if Neymar was playing they would have won but they certainly wouldn't have lost 7-1. His chance to be immortalised in football history was gone. It was a shame because Neymar really did have a chance to win it all but the world got to witness firsthand the specialty of Neymar. It was time to return to Barcelona for the 14-15 season and after missing out on the World Cup Neymar was out for revenge. His game had elevated and he was more consistent, technical and his numbers drastically improved. He landed his first piece of silverware that season winning the league title that year as well as scoring 7 knockout goals in the Copa del Rey including a goal in the final to win another trophy. Yet he wasn't done. Barcelona made the quarterfinals of the Champions League that year where they faced PSG with Neymar scoring 3 goals over both legs advancing to the semis against Bayern where he once again got 3 goals over both legs helping Barcelona reach the final of the Champions League and would you believe it, he once again showed up in the big moment and got himself a goal in the final against Juventus as Barcelona went on to win 
won five straight knockout games he scored in and was one of the main reasons Barcelona won another Champions League. In only his second season, he had completed club football winning the treble. All the hype surrounding him was finally here. He didn't just deliver, he over delivered. With Messi and Suarez alongside him, this became the deadliest front three that football has ever seen. He was strongly making a case for best footballer on the planet and in 2015, he finished on the podium for the Ballon d'Or, finishing behind Messi and Ronaldo. But it was only a matter of time until Neymar was going to be victorious himself. His numbers over the next two years were incredible as he kept performing at a high level as well as winning another league title and two Spanish Cups. But it was one moment in 2017 that stood above the rest. In the Champions League round of 16 against PSG that year, Barcelona lost the first leg embarrassingly 4-0 and they needed a miracle to overcome that deficit in the second leg. Yet one player still believed they could win it all. After winning the penalty, scoring an outrageous free kick and scoring a pen himself all within minutes of each other, Neymar sealed the comeback with an inch perfect ball into the box which Sergi Roberto scored. Neymar had pretty much on his own orchestrated the greatest comeback in Champions League history, La Remontada. One problem, all of the front pages and on Barcelona's social media was Lionel Messi not Neymar. Despite him being the star player, Messi was still the centre of attention. This was Neymar's reality check, that no matter what he did, he'd always be the sidekick. He realised the only way to be the world's best and win the Ballon d'Or would be without Messi. Now the only question was, if he's leaving, where to? A move to the Premier League likely, but when the rumour was he was joining PSG, the whole footballing world turned on him. Barcelona fans called him a traitor and fans accused Neymar of not leaving because of legacy but for the money, joining a very weak league for an insane paycheck. He instantly went from hero to villain. He opted out of becoming a Barcelona legend and winning the biggest trophies in Europe. He made himself public enemy number one after this move but let's imagine he didn't move because of greed and instead legacy. How did he actually do while at PSG? I mean, he already finished 2017 on the Ballon d'Or podium for the second time. Now was the time to win it all for himself at his new club. At PSG, he performed at a very high level, winning five league titles and five domestic cups with the great numbers to back it up. Just by looking at this alone, you'd probably think, how is this underachieving? The truth is, Ligue 1 isn't a competitive league. While he was at Barcelona, he came up against elite teams week in, week out. Teams who were dominating in Europe, but at PSG, the level was much lower. The gap between PSG and every other team in the league was so big that they barely had domestic competition, which is a massive problem when they came up against stronger opponents. Not to mention, durability plays a massive part in your legacy. Guys like Ronaldo and Messi were never injury prone, and up until his move to PSG, neither was Neymar. But looking at the time he spent injured and games he missed, in four years at Barcelona compared to his six years at PSG, one I wonder how did Neymar go from not injury prone to missing 55% of his matches at PSG. This guy cost 222 million euros and barely managed half a season for six years. While yes, some were contact injuries as he did get kicked a bit, most were not. The truth is, his lack of discipline led to long injury times, not looking after his body as much, getting out of shape and most importantly, when Neymar had an injury and his timetable to return was three to four weeks, he'd end up returning eight weeks later. Why? Because instead of rehabbing to get better, he was out completing side quests, going back home to Brazil and partying rather than trying to get fit. Neymar being injury prone is a massive myth. If he wanted to, he could have returned in half the time he was out for, but he just didn't care to. During his time at PSG, football became a non-priority. Instead, partying and living it up was number one in his list. It was so out of hand, the mayor of Paris, Neymar's neighbour, called him an individual without respect, with some of his parties lasting a whole 48 hours. In 2023, while PSG were being crowned champions in France, Neymar was playing poker and partying with Red Bull in Monaco. Yes, footballers can live their life, obviously, but once it gets in the way of football, that's where things get out of hand. His reputation was falling quickly, making headlines for all the wrong reasons. His sole mission when joining PSG was to win the Champions League for them, but he barely even played in any knockout stage games for them, scoring just two knockout goals in six years, both of which came against Dortmund in 2020. Instead, he missed crucial games against Man United, Bayern and Real Madrid. The same player who scored five knockout games in a row for Barcelona wasn't putting in the same performances now, mainly because domestically it wasn't a challenge for him and football became unimportant. To top it all off, by the end of his time at the club, even while Messi was playing for them, PSG were a disaster and Neymar was constantly booed. He even had fans turn up outside his house to protest him being at the club. Barcelona fans ended up hating him 
and now PSG fans hated him too. The only thing he had left was Brazil, the bigger mission of his career, bring glory to his country and fulfill his destiny as the next Pele. But after his great 2014 World Cup run, everyone was expecting silverware from Neymar in the very near future and he had a chance to do that at the 2015 Copa America. Captain of the squad, it was his moment to shine except he didn't. In only the second game against Colombia, Neymar was frustrated as he wasn't having the best game and he let his emotions get the better of him as he lashed out, kicking the ball at a Colombia player then throwing a headbutt at Murillo after the match was over. This landed him a four game suspension and just like that his tournament was over. Not the best follow up from the World Cup but there was still another Copa America in 2016. Except Neymar opted to go to the 2016 Rio Olympics to try and secure gold for his country. And he did exactly that, scoring the winning penalty against the Germany team Brazil were desperate to get revenge over. Securing gold at his home is a great achievement. But the Olympics are an under 23s tournament. While it's a nice victory, Neymar still needed one of the major tournaments if he wanted to join the elites of Brazil. His next chance to do so was the 2018 World Cup. Brazil were favourites for this tournament and Neymar was indeed making headlines but for all the wrong reasons. This was peak Neymar diving, throwing himself to the floor, screaming and crying in agony after these slightest touches, it was so bad he started to become a worldwide meme. Neymar had gone from the star player of the World Cup to the player people couldn't stand because of his theatrics. This was most evident in the quarterfinals against Belgium, a game Brazil were heavy favourites to win but after Belgium went 2-0 up, Neymar needed to rise to the occasion. Brazil had chance after chance to come back into the game but struggled. When it wasn't working for Neymar, he resorted to diving once again looking for cheap penalties as the game was slipping from their hands. It wasn't a pretty sight and they ended up losing 2-1, crashing out in embarrassing fashion. Neymar's quest continued but it couldn't be the 2019 Copa America as Neymar was suffering an injury. No one knew how Brazil would fare without their best player. Turns out they did just fine, taking down Messi's Argentina team on their way to their first Copa America title since 2007, all thanks to not Neymar. The one time Brazil win a major trophy, Neymar isn't even playing. By the time the next Copa America rolled around in 2021, that magic Brazil had was no longer there and Neymar couldn't do enough to personally bring home silverware for his country as they lost to Argentina in the finals. His last chance at securing any major silverware for his country was the 2022 World Cup. They were number one on FIFA rankings coming into this. They were the clear tournament favourites. He led his team to a round of 16 win against South Korea being the star of the show. It was now time to face Croatia in the quarterfinals. Croatia was strong but Brazil were still favourites but once again just like 2018 they had chance after chance and couldn't convert on any. The game went to extra time and pens were minutes away but Neymar showed why he's the country's best player. Rodrigo returns it. Neymar, they're walking their way through. Right there, we saw Neymar at his full powers. Finally, we got to see what we haven't seen from him in six years, him taking control of the game and dominating. This should have been the winning goal that gave Brazil a legit shot at winning the World Cup, but Brazil were caught sleeping as Croatia equalised in the dying minutes. And to kill Neymar's legacy, Brazil were poor on pens, losing 4-2 as Neymar didn't even get to take his pen at all. It was genuinely sad to watch. He was in tears as he knew his last chance at world glory was gone. That World Cup heartbreak was likely his last chance to win over the hearts of Brazilians as even though Neymar is their all time leading goal scorer, he didn't fulfil what he was supposed to with Brazil. And to make it worse, Neymar was accused of selling out after joining Saudi at just 30 years old, effectively giving up on his career for a shiny 1 million euros per week, mansions, jets, private staff, they basically made him a prince, also he could barely play football there. Neymar is now labelled as greedy, underachiever and a traitor by many. Often fans point out that Neymar is nothing but a diva, always getting into fights, constantly diving and spends more time partying than playing football. He single handedly became the most hated footballer in the world but the thing is, most people will tell you that all of his antics started after he joined PSG but that's not true. Julio Cesar while Neymar was at Santos said, Neymar's the biggest f***ing diver. Neymar while he was at Barcelona was seen partying loads of times and even during his time in Spain he got into loads of fights so it's not like any of this was new for fans. Yet fans only started complaining about this stuff after he joined PSG. So why did that move make so many fans hate him? Well the same reason his move to Saudi made fans hate him. It was clear that Neymar stopped caring about football. Neymar had the opportunity to build one of the best dynasties in football history with MSN and win everything 5 times over but he wanted to build his own legacy right? Yeah he didn't do that at all, he chased a fat paycheck, didn't take football seriously, he was very happy being a celebrity, partying and avoiding the responsibility of the football pitch. While at Barcelona he was on track to being the greatest Brazilian and cement himself as one of the best players of all time. 
but that didn't happen. People like to use his numbers and his one Champions League to highlight how great his career was. For anyone else, that's incredible, but this is Neymar we're talking about. The guy was a top 10 player in the world at 19 while still playing in Brazil. The trajectory this guy was on after 2015 was supposed to be side by side with Pele and R9. Now, if you even mention them in the same sentence is blasphemy. He didn't fulfill his task with Brazil and he won't go down as a PSG legend, nor do Barca fans claim him as a legend there either. So what is there? According to Brazilians, the very people who once worshipped him, even they feel hard done by by his career. That move to PSG wasn't some random event that led people into hating him, it was confirmation that Neymar was more focused on other things than football and that's why so many hate him. I know there's many Neymar fans who felt like he had a great career and he's still one of the best players ever and you're kind of right but there's no doubt in every football fan's mind that Neymar could have done more of his career and that his move to PSG was the sole reason for him not doing so. He became too distracted by his new life that football was not a priority and that was only confirmed after the lockdown Champions League in 2020. There were no parties, no distractions, just football and that is where Neymar played his best. He was so good, people were claiming he was the world's best footballer at the time. That year, PSG made the Champions League final but sadly they lost to Bayern Munich but that was a reminder of what Neymar could achieve if he truly focused on winning. PSG will probably be European champions by now and no doubt Neymar would have a Ballon d'Or for it but Neymar was just too caught up in the celebrity life and didn't care enough. Now he's moved to Saudi, his career is over. His legacy won't change and after his heartbreaking ACL injury, he will miss the 2024 Copa America. Meaning for the remaining three years of his career, he'll barely be trying, collecting a fat paycheck in the Middle East, then retire being able to party full time and be a celebrity and that will be his true legacy. A famous name, but not much about his football. We all wanted to see what Neymar would become ever since he emerged at Santos and after his spell at Barcelona, it felt like we were witnessing history except that all stopped in 2017 and he's let down all his fans since. I still believe Neymar is one of the most talented footballers of all time but what he achieved on the pitch was 30% of what we all knew he was capable of. But let me know, do you think he underachieved?